Hi, I'm Bart Hansen for CrushLivePoker.com. This is the only training site exclusively made to help you win at live No Limit Cash games. Let's take a look at some sample content. You know, when we talk about adjustments in a game like this, it gets limped around, and if I'm max here in the small blind playing 1,500 and everybody else is deep, am I bumping this one up here like he did here at a 25? Uh, probably not. I actually do a lot of just checking, and well, in this particular game, you don't need to do anything in the small blind because it's 5-5, five, five, but oftentimes people will ask me what I do with high offsuit broadways in a game like this. You know, should I race for value? Should I just kind of check or limp along and you know, basically hit my hand. You know, you can go either way with it. I mean, you can certainly make the case that there are some games where you wouldn't necessarily race king-queen off for value in a nittier game um, unless, you know, you know, for some reasons where you raise and you think you can see bet when guys miss, when they limp call with pocket pairs. Um, but to, like, kind of make a pot sweetener with queen-jack offsuits, not really the spot that uh, that I, you know, that I want to be in here, only to 25 I would rather just kind of check and see if I can hit top pair and go for basically for three streets. Obviously, queen jack off is not a great no limit hand. It's uh, it's one of my favorite hands for barreling, but in a game like this, one, two, three, four people have limped in already. You're gonna make it 25. You're gonna get everybody to call. And now all you know, we talk about c bet factors, number of players is really the number one factor opposite to image. And you're going to have everyone call, so you don't really have the opportunity to bluff all that much. Um, and queen jack off is just not really a, a good enough hand to raise, you know, for value. So I would just basically, you know, kind of check and limp along. And of course, like I said, what's going to happen, everyone is basically going to call here. And we're going to see it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways. I think I said four people had limped in, but I think five people had limped in. It's crazy. Um, you know, five ways. And all of a sudden, you're playing the super bloated pot up here out of position. And you have no real tools to do anything but hit some sort of monstrous hand. Here we go to the flop. And again, we're playing from max a spot. Okay. You know, queen, ten, four with a couple of diamonds. So... Not a bad flop here, and I'm definitely going to be betting here for value. Um, 45 and a 155, I would probably bet 75 to 100, depending on, you know, the looseness of the game. We can see that Jose here in seat four has seven nine of diamonds, which is just basically a dry, you know, flush draw. What do I think if I'm in Jose's spot and a guy raises it to 25, which is kind of a pot sweetener raise, and then leads for 45 on this flop? I don't think he's overly strong. Now, Jose certainly did kind of try to lag it up a little bit. Uh, and it goes back and forth where people are like, oh my god, you just have to make your hand in this game, in, in a game like this. But really, bet sizing is such an important tool when it comes to like evaluating you know, the strength of someone's hand. I mean, if you take yourself into a $5 blind game and you say, this guy makes it 25 over five limpers, and then he bets one third pot on a board of queen, ten, four with a two flush. How often is that going to be indicative of aces, kings, pocket queens? Almost never. You know, I almost think it would be like ace, king, ace, jack type of thing here. It's queen, jack, or whatever, king, queen. And then you just have to ask yourself could you get this guy off of, you know, that hand with seven, nine of diamonds? Yes, seven, nine of diamonds is dry. But you could certainly raise some of the time in position and manipulate your position to see what the preflop raiser does out of the blind when he basically leads weak. Of course, you also drive some of the diamond draws out behind you if the game is not absolutely insane. Um, so that's basically like my take on that particular situation. And today we're going to get into two of the most important concepts when you are trying to increase your win rate in live no limit hold'em cash games. At the lower to mid stakes levels and even at the higher stakes levels, no limit cash games are all about extracting maximum value with what you think is the best hand. 
a lot of people with backgrounds in tournaments and some extremely capped restricted buy-in games you know have found that trapping with big hands um, can be the most profitable way about going and playing a specific type of scenario but whenever you get over 100 big blinds deep and deeper and deeper and deeper it's all about getting the most amount of money in with the best possible hand which comes into uh, getting into a concept called way ahead way behind and it's one of the most important concepts as a new player that you can learn you never want to put yourself in a position where you make such an aggressive action that everything weaker than your hand will fold and only stronger will continue on. I'll give you an example here and it's something that you that you see commonly at the smaller stakes games. Ninny old guy raises, you know, in a in, let's say he's in a 2-5 game with a $500 cap. You know, he raises with pocket aces over one limper to $30. So he makes a big raise and maybe a guy on the button calls and uh, the limper calls. And the board comes out jack 8-6 with two clubs. And he gets checked to the ninny guy, and he comes out, and he bets $200 into a $90 pot. I feel like Bart took me to the next level by really focusing on my post-flop hand-reading abilities. Like nowadays, everybody knows how to play pre-flop, but Bart has a really, really good sense of uh, board textures and uh, post-flop hand-reading, and he just pretty much always knows where he's at, and uh, it really helped my game a lot. There were a lot of things that I didn't know. And the most important thing at first that he taught me was how not to overplay hands. Since Black Friday, I've been transitioning, playing more live. Uh, and that's where I think uh, Bart's training material really shines, is uh, teaching you how to play specifically live cash game. And I think it's fantastic. That's just a small sampling of the training material that's here on CrushLivePoker.com. If you want to take a look at full-length sample content, you can click on the headset or the film icon above this video player. The podcasts and the videos come out on a weekly basis, as does the Lyman Show. CrushLivePoker.com has a great system to organize the content by a series of tags. If you click on subscribe now down below, you'll get instant access to everything. I guarantee you, if you use the advice that's given here on this site, you will drastically increase your win rate in live No Limit Cash games. Good luck at the tables.